from the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. Thursday edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Chase Parham, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio this morning. Jeffrey Wright will join us in a bit. We'll talk mostly about the, uh, not surprising, but the sad and ridiculous verdict that comes out of college basketball yesterday as jail time is going to uh, occur for three different individuals for uh, helping schools land players by offering them money. However, apparently they uh, defrauded the schools in the process. So it was good all the way around. Uh, a lot of logical, legal things going on in uh, the Northeast. So we'll uh, we'll get into that with Jeffrey here in a bit. We also ask for questions from you for Twitter and the message board since it is a bye week. Ole Miss back in action next Saturday against South Carolina at 11 a.m. Matt Luke video, some other things up on the site at rebelgrove.com. This morning we'll have more coverage, uh, including some baseball this weekend, Ole Miss and Little Rock. 2 o'clock for that final fall intra-squad. Again, 12 innings. They'll clear the school board after six innings and then play uh, six more. It's free substitution. It's going to look like a 9- and 10-year-old baseball game from that standpoint. No, I do not have a lineup, but we will uh, have some semblance of uh, of coverage of that. So. Do you have a hot board ready to go? In case they lose to yes. the uh, Trojans. On, uh, aren't they the Trojans? Yeah. Little Rock's Trojans. Yeah. yeah. If you lose on October the – I've covered basketball at that arena in Little Rock. Quit trying to change the subject. It, uh-huh. If they lose on October the twenty something, it's over, and you got to have a hot board ready to go. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Nevertheless, two out of three to Wright State to open the two thousand nineteen season. Uh, all right. Oxford Crystal today. They uh, bring him back the maple bourbon shake. So if you'd like that, if it had any bourbon in it, I might be really really interested right now. Is it too early? I'm a milkshake guy, though. It was. It's. It's never too early. I mean, NCAA day. It was not too early. So I mean, you know, it's fine. I was on like number four by then. But um, we will. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, sorry. Maple bourbon, sh- bourbon shake at the Oxford Crystal. Stop in, get it. Maybe pair it with those pimento cheese bites. You can make your own combo there if you so choose. Next door at the Oxford Exxon, Speed Pass Plus out, mobile rewards, plenty of ways to save money, or make sure they take care of your tailgate. For Carolina next week, got racks of ribs, pulled pork, court size sides, and much more. And again, coming to you from the Clark Ford studio. We are. Clark Ford is in Amory, Mississippi, 662 257 1900. Call the number, ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what new Ford you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes and business hours. It's that simple. It's right to the bottom line. There's no haggling. It's just a great deal. You get great service after the sale, you get a uh, fantastic Ford product. Corey wants to be your truck guy. He wants to be your car guy. He'll prove it to you. Uh, and then tell him that you heard about Clark Ford on the podcast. You can mention any of our family of podcasts. We're taping a beer garden today. Taping a greatest pod in the south today. So mention any of those. You'll save $500 off the bottom line from Clark Ford and Amory. All right. Uh, jumping in some questions if you'd like. If you got something else you'd like to talk about. No, go no. Let's do it. Let's, sure? Let's go. You act like you had another topic. No, I mean, there's. We'll probably get to it on this. There's a lot of DJ Jeffrey stuff out there today. It it. This is not complicated, boys and girls. Well, didn't we say that yesterday? Is there yeah. really anything new from yesterday? Here's the only thing that that people have to understand is that DJ Jeffrey's at Memphis Madness or whatever they call it, Mad Memphis or or whatever it is. They have the cool floor. Floor yeah. was neat that night. Yeah, floor was neat. Um, whatever it's called. At that event, he didn't get the love. Somebody else got the love. James Wiseman got the love. And he got his feelings hurt. It's okay. He's a kid. I say this all the time. He happens to be a kid who can run fast and jump high and dunk a ball. But he's still a kid. He's 17. Most of you have either once been 17 or you're on your way to 17. Some of you are like me, and you live with a 17-year-old. They're moody, just like you were at 17. Now, the difference is all these 
schools are recruiting you and stuff like that. What's all that's happened in this deal is, and let me phrase this carefully. And for those of you who have the ability to kind of read between the lines, you'll know what I'm saying. And those who can't, I'm sorry. Um, as it's become more possible, if not likely, that James Wiseman is going to take his basketball talents elsewhere, whether to Lexington or Nashville. Uh, Penny Hardaway and the staff at Memphis has had to turn its attention to other targets. And that means D.J. Jeffries. And on Sunday, D.J. Jeffries was shown the love. He does have a long lasting, long-term long relationship with Penny. He's played for his AAU team in the past. There is a relationship there. They know each other. The family knows Hardaway. The dad is active on Memphis radio. His ego is actively involved. And um, that's just, it's all stacked up. And Mississippi State, for whatever reason or reasons, sort of pulled off in this recruiting quest. This is going to sound like it has more of a negative connotation than I really mean for it to do. Without covering it at all, Corey Jeffries comes across as the exact stereotype of, like, that character. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, in every movie and TV show and people we've dealt with and real life and everything. I mean, it's it's it's, it's all the way around. Yes. Friday Night Lights, you take your pick. Yes. 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 I mean, I... I it just kind of struck me. It was like, hits on every little bitty thing. It's like, check, check. Check, I'm not. Check, check. I'm not being a smart aleck. There's just nothing I can add to yeah, it. You, you said it. I mean, I could just parrot what you said, or I could just go yes. So yes, yes. All right. And on top of this, uh-huh. the old Miss job's a hard job. I know there's a lot of the the whole Andy Kennedy stuff, and did Kennedy try hard enough, and all that. And we make this clear: Kennedy got burned out. Kennedy got burned out, and it was time for a change, period. So don't do the whole, oh, you're saying he should. No, he should. absolutely, it was time for a change. Now, the only thing I'll say about Kennedy and time for a change was that the deal with Vitter a year ago, or whenever that happened, I lose track, was so poorly managed by Jeffrey Vitter that it just accelerated And things. Andy. And Andy. Yeah. Absolutely. It was a gamble on Andy's part that it did not that yes. he did not win. Yes. He expected to really win with that next team, which would had forced a lot of things. I think Andy was playing the this town's not big enough for the two of us. Yeah. And turns out that it probably was not big enough for either of them because I suspect they're both gone. Yeah. Right. Um Andy's at ESPN slash SEC Network. He'll do a bang-up job, and everything's good, and I think he's happy, and it's all good, and he will be the first to tell you that it was time to go. That doesn't change the fact that this is a really, really, really hard job. Really hard. If you rank the SEC jobs 1 through 14, it's a lot closer to 14 than it is 1. All right, what we got? Let's see. Uh, I'll start here. Uh, hearing the Purdue beat writer on the podcast Wednesday talk about the deep doldrums of the football program before Brom got there. It sounded a lot like Ole Miss is go- what they're going through and headed for. Can it get 1,500 fans bad? No, Ole Miss is never going to get to the point that Purdue was there at one point. Come on, guys. Like, they were awful. No, no, Year no, over year. No, no, no. no. They're 5-3. and three. Purdue would have thrown ticker tape parades at 5-3 and three for a lot of those seasons. It's one I mean, of the things I'm really yeah. surprised by is how – much angst is based on, I think, the way that the defense played against Southern Illinois. And Kent State offensively and Kent State, for a half. And how the offense has looked against good teams. Defenses. Yeah, yeah. But, no, it's not even in the same stratosphere as Purdue bad. No. I mean, per- Purdue was a, a train wreck inside a tornado there for – Purdue was Kansas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every bit of it. I mean, and no, 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 no. No SEC school was getting Purdue bad. They're just not. I mean, Vanderbilt could, but no. But you're, that's the only one. That, you're, you're, and, and, and it's a different – that's a whole – Yeah, another, it's a whole different deal. That's yeah, a whole sure. other realm. But no, 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 no. Not even, not even a little bit. Um, who's the head coach for Ole Miss in 2020? It's Matt Luke. Um, some people said, why would it not be Matt Luke? Well, I mean, okay. 
two and ten and no one in the stands in night. I'll give you a scenario. I mean, that's the scenario. If you told me to tell you what the scenario, I'll is. give you a scenario. It look, doesn't enha- it doesn't include migrant midgets from Moscow. Right. That, that yeah. That, I mean, that's obvious. That is a scenario. That's obvious. I mean, if he gets caught in a in a sexual scandal involving migrant midgets from Moscow, well, there are problems. Don't like the odds on that one. Minus that, here's the scenario: they lose out. He Five does. Seven. He does not make changes. He doubles down on his staff. Recruiting ends poorly. Recruiting goes badly, and they go three and nine, and no one's in the stands. Well, then that that there's your scenario. Yeah. If you just want a scenario, that's the scenario. yeah. I mean, now before before anyone at the Ole Miss Spirit goes, McCrady said, I said that's a scenario. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't I think know. Think Matt's the coach in 2020. I don't know how many games they win. I think staff changes are coming. I think it's more likely than not that multiple staff changes are coming. Now, who does he replace those people with? I don't know. What is their record next year? I don't know. If you told, if you ask me whether I think Matt Luke is the head coach at Ole Miss in 2020 or not, my answer is yes. I think he is. Will Longo be the offensive coordinator in 2019, or will he accept another job at another school? I think he gets out his own his own accord after the season. And I think opinion. I agree with that. I think he's likely some semblance of a head coach next year, if you made me take a guess. If you made me guess, that's what I would guess, yeah. too. Now, if you told me that one of the coordinators is back next year, I would guess that it's Longo. Yeah. Personally, I think they're probably both going to be new people. Mm-hmm. But either way, yeah, I, I think – yeah, I, I, if you laid every option on the table, that's the one I would pick if I had to just pick one up. It would be he's in another, he's another school as a head coach next season. I think I would agree with that. Are you worried about Parker Caracy due to all the innings he threw last season? In question from uh, Cole Woods. No, because Mike's usually very careful about arms in the fall if there's been any overuse from the summer or the uh, the previous spring. And Parker's active this fall. No, no one has shut down at this point other than Taylor Broadway been dealing with some shoulder soreness at times. But I think if there was any concern there, any worry, uh, Parker would be on the shelf. They don't need him throwing in the fall. Um, they're very aware of what he can or cannot do. So, no, I, I think that all signs point to that being uh, okay for Ole Miss next season. I expect him to be the closer once again and uh, be able to throw multiple innings, multiple days a week, probably be used in a very similar fashion to uh, – Two last season, other than early in the year, they need to get some other guys' work. They need to find some other roles, some more niches, and try to keep guys fresh for the end of the season. From Marine Reb, uh, what is your theory as to why Vitter wants us to have a bottom-rung football program? Well, he doesn't. Um, No chancellor wants Ole Miss to struggle at football. Um, No chancellor, president, or athletic director at any school would like their football program to struggle. That's not – I mean, that's not even logical. Um does Vitter appear to – I say appear. I don't know. I don't know him. He refuses to come on the podcast. Um, don't necessarily blame him, frankly. But um, He's probably running out of time to come on. Yeah, I think we'd have to get things going pretty quickly at this point to uh, to get that visit done uh, based on what I hear. But, um, no, I mean, come on. Do I think he's influenced by some people at times? Yes, there's no doubt. I think there's – there's a lot of that involved. I think he's in a bubble. I, th- I think he surrounds himself by a a a, a, Man, a bubble. I'm craving tacos all of a sudden. It's weird. Wait, I'm sorry. Are wait. you really? Yeah, it's out of the blue. Soft or hard shell? <sighs> I'm a hard shell guy. Are you really? Yeah. You don't like soft shell tacos? I like soft shell tacos. I just I like a crunch. Do you? Yeah. You like those like Doritos tacos or anything, or just got to be pretty basic? I've never had those. I had one. I wasn't a fan. Just give me the regular. I I'm. I'm not big on like Taco Bell. I like going and get. I like that taco shop in Oxford, and yeah. those are soft shell. Soft, yeah. But those are great, really okay. good. Chicken or beef? Both. No, no favorite. Uh, I like the pork. Okay. Um, I like the chicken. Mm-hmm. I like the steak. I like the ground beef. There's another. Uh, uh, I can't remember the the name. It's more the authentic Mexican. It's fantastic. Really, really good. Okay. Good enough. Would you like to add anything there? Would you like me to move on? Oh, no, I just I don't know what happened to make me start thinking about Taco Bell. I know. Would you like to add anything, or would you like to move on? Uh, are you asking whether I think Vitter's going to move on? Is that what you're saying? Oh, oh, you well, do the I question. Want, would you like to? Oh, elaborate yeah. anyway. No, no, I'm I'm ready to move on. I think that's you're doing a lot of just letting letting it move on right now. You're kind of just sitting back over there, just saying. I I think you're doing a hell of a job running the show, and I'm do you? I'm kind of letting you. 
Um, of course, the defense has a talent problem, but has anyone with football knowledge weighed in on McGriff's scheme, Mr. McCready? Uh, I have sent out uh, some emails to some people who are football scheme people asking this very question. So when I get those answers, I'll I'll bring them to you. I don't know enough about pure scheme to know. Here's what I'm told from people who know what they're talking about. They're not very good pre-snap, which is coaching. They have a hard time getting to the right place, which is talent. That's what I'm told. The pre-snap stuff is coaching. The ability to get there is talent. There appears to be deficiencies in both categories. I did think Russell had a pretty good observation when he was at our live show a few weeks ago where he talked about McGriff has always been known as a very good recruiter. He was a very good recruiter in 2012 when he was here as a position coach. And being a coordinator puts so much extra onus on you, and especially with this team and the way you've got to really, really manage things right now. It does probably create some deficiencies in your ability and time to recruit, which so then you've got kind of this lesser version of two things versus something that Wesley's been very, very good at throughout his career. Here's an analogy. If I tell you you can go to a restaurant that serves one thing, but it's exceptional, or you can go to a restaurant that serves 10 things and it's all just kind of average, what are you going to choose? You're picking the one thing and getting the steak or the whatever it is every time. Yeah. You go to the taco shop, you order tacos. You go to the Cheesecake Factory, you go, oh, my. Yeah. Pick a page and order from that page, and you know it's just going to be it's gonna, blah. It's going to be a six. Maybe. On a good day. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. You good. feel you feel much better when you walk into a restaurant and there was four menu items, six menu items. You go to a, items. a renowned barbecue place, right? What are you getting? Barbecue. You don't go to the renowned barbecue place and go, hey, you guys got any chicken fingers? Back in there? What's <laughs> Hey, I was wondering, can I get a hot dog? It's why you don't really get mad at the server at Rendezvous when he's kind of a jerk to the people that don't order just what you're supposed to order. Yeah. Come in. Their, or, their servers are fairly rude if you're yes. like, well, what about the pork show? You know, like yeah, Get the sausage plate and the ribs. <laughs> get the beans and the slaw and, and a pitcher of beer and shut up. Yeah. When you deviate from How's that. How's the grilled chicken salad? It's he like, looks at you like, why? Go to Chili's, dumbass. Right? Yeah. I mean, get. I might even say that to you, frankly. Get get the sausage plate. and then Because there's always customers that are somewhat offended. They're like, he's supposed to be really nice to me. It's like, no, what? you're just supposed to order what you're supposed to order. When he says, what can I get for you? He more means half a slab or a full slab. Yeah. Or, or do you want two slabs? Do you want me to bring out Would you like the barbecue nachos or would you like the sausage and cheese plate? Right. That, that, that's, that's my that's He's my really point. asking you which beer would you like. Sweet but, or unsweet tea. Yeah. You want Bud Light or Miller Light? Yeah. Y'all want pictures? Y'all want me to bring them out one by one? Yeah. How y'all want to do this? Yeah. He's not really asking you what would you like. Because what he'd really love to do is say, all right, you look. Are you hungry? Or are you kind of hungry? Are oh, you hungry? Okay, I'm gonna get you a rack. Do you want to be able to button your pants at the end of the night or not? Don't really care. All right, I'm gonna get you a rack. Mm-hmm. Here's the sausage and maybe pack. some banana pudding when we're done. Yeah. When he comes back at the end and asks you, "Can I get you dessert?" That's literally a question. Because <laughs> what he's really saying there is, "Can I move the table now and get yeah, someone else?" Yeah. Are to you sit down? Are you heathens gonna eat more or are you done? Yeah. Do you want a to-go box? That's a question. It's fair. I don't know how we got here. but Well, that's the McGriff thing. McGriff's a really good recruiter. There's a button on the phone that silences yeah, mine's it. mine's broken. Is it really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. You could probably kill it inside the settings, too. I don't know. I probably could. And now I'm in the middle of a family. It's a family text that has gone wild. Oh, yeah. You got problems? No, it's just pretty interesting. Hmm. Okay, sorry. No, you're good. What you got? It was a family thing. Well, I know. All right, Hal Reese along these lines says, we all know Ole Miss will have, this on Twitter, will have a new D.C. next year and could possibly see a change at O.C. Do you all have any clue as to who some candidates might be? I get this in the mailbag every week. And who would better fit Luke's 
quote, scheme. I, I don't want to get into specific candidates with five weeks left in the season. I mean, I've heard some names. I really don't feel that's fair to anybody right now to get into a lot of that. Is there a, do you have an opinion on scheme? What does Matt Luke want his football team to look like? I think he would like it to be a little more, not pro style, but at least a run spread or something a little more. Because, frankly, here's the funny thing about this with Longo. He's pretty balanced. He He's more balanced than he gets credit for being from a run pass standpoint. They're literally like half and half. Yeah, he's done a pretty good job of staying traditionally balanced. Now, Longo hates that because he said that's not balance. Balance is more about having a threat to do either in, in multiple situations more than just 50-50. 50-50 doesn't necessarily mean balanced. I think that's that's something that's gets screwed up over time. But in that traditional sense, he's done a pretty good job of staying balanced. But I think Matt wants to Matt wants to dictate tempo. I think he wants to um, fit his defense a little better from a run standpoint. I, I think that he would like to chill out a little, just slow down a little, let's run some offense, uh, you know, a, a maybe a non-no-huddle version of Auburn, the way they run the football, I think that's probably a decent comparison. Um, a little more a little more big play oriented, but a, somewhat of kind of what South Carolina tries to do if they had the talent to do it all the way over there, something along those lines. And I'm not – I mean, I know that brings a Roper and a, and a Werner thing back into it, but that really wasn't where I was going there. I just meant looking at teams in the SEC, those are the two that stick out as far as – what, in my opinion, Matt probably would like to do if he just had his complete druthers. Booster number 12 wants to know, it's a fair question, would McGriff be experiencing the same heat he is now if the recruiting class had several blue-chip defensive players in it? That's a fair question. Mm, no. Mm -mm. Uh, I think you would go, hey, all this is on – we love our guys, but all this is mostly on talent. We see there's issues. We like some of these freshmen. They're going to get better as time goes on. And, hey, these dudes are coming. Um no, there's gonna be some heat because I mean it's it's so bad at times. But um, you know the other thing too, and it, we're, we're guilty of this a little bit. Now look, I'm I'm not defending this defense. It's it's bad. It's really bad. We do get hung up on total yardage too much when they're on the field for a hundred plays. Yards per play is a whole lot better of an indicator from an Ole Miss defensive standpoint because. Frankly, they're just out there constantly. They're going to give up more total yards than the average defense strictly based off how much they're on the field versus their opponent. Well, and given – I have talked about this. Given their lack of depth, the offensive system that they run doesn't make sense. Go fast, 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 fast. Yeah, it's throw, a bad marriage. Throw them back out there. It's a terrible marriage. Yeah. It's the – I don't know. I started to make a really bad analogy. Um, Real quick before we do that, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll come back to this in a second. Let's go to, go to Jeffrey in one minute. Before we do that, I'll tell you the podcast brought to you in part by Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga. Underwriting and processing is done in Memphis. You're getting local underwriting and understands your market. A leader in condo financing and the float down option. So contact Jason at 662-234-2704 or JLO. That's J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. Megan Phillips with LAH Real Estate is the person to call for all your real estate needs in the Birmingham area. With almost a decade of experience, Megan's knowledge and expertise can help you buy or sell your home today. So visit her website, MeganMPhillips.com. That's M-E-A-G-A-N-M-Phillips.com. Or call Megan at 205-602-7929. Podcast also brought to you by Oxford University Bank. Excuse me, OUB, locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. OUB is offering one-year CDs at 1.75% annual percentage yield, three-year triple option CDs paying 2.01% APY. With the three-year term, customers can deposit once during the term, withdraw once during the term, and or bump the rate if OUB's three-year rate rises. To learn more about OUB, check out LiveOxford, BankOxford.com. Or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. Podcast also brought to you by Harry Alexander. Harry is an Oxford-based REMAX legacy realty agent. He's been in Oxford more than four decades. No one knows the residential and condo market in Oxford better than Harry. Go to his site. He'll prove it to you. HarryAlexander.com. Click on the Properties and Neighborhoods tab. Filter through by what you're looking for. And then send him an email. It's ha at HarryAlexander.com. And we're brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, Grenada Nissan, located just off Interstate 55 in Grenada, Mississippi, is the place to go. Gene and Sandy Grass uh, run Grenada Nissan. They do a great job. I've been a customer for more than 10 years. 
Uh, they've been friends of this site, of this podcast, for um, since we've been doing it. They're fantastic people. Um, don't go visit them just for us. Go visit them because they will take great care of you. You'll get a great product, phenomenal service, a quick, efficient service, service that cares about you as a customer. You'll be thrilled to be driving a, a Nissan, Grenada Nissan vehicle. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. Now, Jeffrey Wright on the Oxford Exxon podcast. Jeffrey, good morning. I'm sure your day will be filled with plenty of basketball talk coming off the uh, the verdicts in the case yesterday. I have to, uh, you know, from a from a legal standpoint, it's been nothing short of fascinating. But jury of your peers, certainly not a jury of their peers, a jury of people with heads in the clouds that do not understand any semblance of how this thing works. Because in the closing arguments or whatever – Made the argument that had the schools known about all this, they wouldn't. Uh, they wouldn't have even given the scholarships out. That takes a lot of presumption, and somehow the jury completely bought it. Does anyone understand the importance of language quite like a lawyer? Because making sure that, you know, what what does a jury of one's own peers mean? Like, like that's what I do enjoy about law, and that's what initially fascinated about me. And then I talked to like lawyers and they're like hey whatever you do the argument aspect of it is very interesting to me but i think what i think what the larger point is i bet it wasn't that difficult to find 12 people like i bet this was i bet this was the question they asked during when they were doing the selection process do you know who john calipari is and if the answer was yes, they dismissed everyone. And if the answer was no, you, they started digging a little deeper. And so that that was what it is. And I think it just shows that, you know, even even people in our region of the world, they kind of think they know what's going on. But, you know, I think there are a lot of people that were really like, wait, does this really happen like this? And it's like, yeah, that's yeah. exactly how it happens. But I think the other fascinating aspect about this is that this judge, I believe his name was Kaplan, he did not allow a lot of testimony that involved showing coach involvement. Now, someone that's a much better legal mind and you know someone that has gone beyond taking the LSAT can probably tell you why. My understanding is that it had it did not specifically have to do with this case so he did not allow it so what i think could be more fascinating is the court cases against the assistant coaches because you know are they going to go down with the ship because it's not like hey you know it's not like hey the punishment is a show cause punishment now is federal prison so that could be fascinating, but really what I think it just shows, man, is, you know, if you're on federal trial, probably better off cutting a deal. They don't lose much. There's no doubt. It's one of the most fascinating things was Merrill Code was offered a deal so many times, and all he had to do was sing, and pardon the pun, but he, he followed the code, that Barney Farrar code of, no, you know, I'm 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 going to be – uh, I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take one for the team here because that's that's the, that's the the deal. When the feds come to you, and they've got you, cut a deal now. So if I'm Chuck Person and and these guys that are about to be, is, is it Chuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. If I'm these people that are about to be on trial, I'm calling my lawyer today and going, all right, what can we do? Well, because what's interesting about this to me was Michael Buchanan from Sports Illustrated, the legal guy that always writes these yeah. kind of stories. We, we, we've had him on the show. He's yeah. a good dude. He's the, he's the first one to kind of lay out exactly how the prosecution made their case as far as the universities being the, 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 the people that were fraud, fraudulent against or whatever. Because it says, defrauded. yeah, right. It says, while the coach may gain from the enrollment of a superior player, the university provided the same player a full athletic scholarship and financial aid under a false pretense. Along those lines, the university and its admissions office staff purportedly believed the player was eligible to play under NCAA rules when, in fact, he was not. 
The university then lost control of its finite financial assets, namely athletic scholarships and financial aid packages. Further, by enrolling such a player, the school became at risk of punishment under NCAA amateurism rules. Likewise, prosecutors argued there was an intent to harm these schools. Certain Adidas employees, agents, coaches, and family members of the schools knowingly conspired to facilitate the enrollment of paid-off student-athletes to the school was the argument they actually made. And to Jeffrey's point, they found 12 people who would believe that. Yeah. And we talk about this all the time. Jeffrey and I had this conversation yesterday, uh, obviously off the air. The Super Bowl is unquestionably the biggest sporting event in the United States. No, no, one, no one's arguing that. The Super Bowl is is Tiger on the 18th on a Sunday at, at television event of the year. Yeah, it's period, and two thirds of the country don't watch the Super Bowl because what we do, what we all do, what we do for a living, and because we live with our phones in our hands on Twitter, we think, or it's easy to forget, I should say, that there's the overwhelming majority of the masses that you see out there. They're not hanging on every score. They're, they're not obsessed with sports. They're not keeping up with college basketball. College basketball is a fringe sport 11 and a half months out of the year. Yes, and I think that is, to me, that's kind of the overarching point because even though we understand that those universities weren't defrauded, in fact, they got rich off of this system and – they were, I mean, for the lack of a better word, I mean, they're, I mean, they were completely complicit in this process. There's maybe a don't ask, don't tell, and there's a plausible deniability aspect of it, but it's not like Louisville was going, whoa, let's, hold on, guys. We, we don't, we, are we sure these guys are eligible? Are we 100% sure? Because I need everyone in this room to tell me these guys are eligible. Okay, good. Well, because that's what's hilarious about this that I, I guess Gary Parrish is making fun not, of. It, not to leave Kansas out of this. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, I'm just... they found eight women and four men to take this sentence seriously. If the universities had known about the defendant's secret payments, they would have never issued those scholarships. Chase, there are people who subscribe to sites like ours who know who know the score but refuse to accept it. Well, Neil, not hold take... Up, not, hold up, hold up, yeah. time out, time out. I love them to death. And I'm about to do the I love them, but I I cannot fathom that if Jay Tate, I want Jay Tate and I want Gabe on truth serum. That's exactly where I was going right now. I, yes. Explain this to me, guys. <laughs> you do agree that this is happening in college basketball. College football makes about 70 times the <laughs> amount of money that college basketball does. And you're telling me that you all agree that this is a business and that you think this is happening in basketball, but it's not happening in football? Because I, I, I don't understand that. That truly is, if these guys are, like, they don't, they're not as smart as I think they are, or they are just such, like, journalism guys that they don't understand basic core business, which typically changes when you have to run your own website, which they do, and they do successfully, because I cannot believe that. Yeah, Jeffrey referencing a greatest pod in the South a couple weeks ago where Gabe and Jay did not believe that the top ten football players in the country get any sort of impermissible benefit to sign it with said institution. It my mind. And, 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 and here's the part where I argue with them. If, what you're, if, if everything is a box of cash, okay, when you see kids move, when you see kids move across the country, their families move across the country to get jobs and such, that's a benefit. Boosters arrange that. And the boosters arrange that so that the, those kids would go to a certain school. It's pay for play. Absolutely. And by the way, I'm not morally opposed to it. If you if you want to bring well, I'm morally for it. All right. If you want to bring, I don't know, say an offensive lineman who just happens to be from Florida's tackle to Oxford, Mississippi, because that's going to give you a better chance to win football games and they want to do it. By all means. 
But let's get serious. If that kid couldn't play football, you would have no interest in moving him and paying the amount of money that you want to spend to get that kid and his family in Oxford to be able to watch him play football. So we take a break, and our talk with Jeffrey will tell you that Christmas is right around the corner. Master Cuts wants to keep your home looking up to par this holiday season. Master Cuts offers a variety of outdoor Christmas decorations that will transform your house into a festive staple of the neighborhood. They provide anything with lighting and garland, the inflatable characters, whatever the vision may be. Master Cuts will work with you to design a custom display unique to your home. The best part, all the decorations you pay for, you'll own them. Master Cuts will keep and store the decorations until they're ready to go the next year or give them to you to keep. The option is yours. Start a tradition your family will cherish for years to come. Call Master Cuts to schedule a free quote at 662-607-7773. Podcast also brought to you in part by John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. If you've been thinking about that golf trip with the guys you'll never forget, maybe that anniversary trip she'll never forget. Uh, Maybe you've dreamed of playing at St. Andrews or sitting at a cafe in Paris, whatever it might be, get in touch with John Edwards before you try to do it by yourself. Why use John? Well, he's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows John to supply his clients with added values, unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. John traveled the globe for 37 years before getting into the travel business, so he knows the extra attention that is needed to make a special trip one that creates a lifetime of unique memories. So if you're thinking about going with the boys to Pebble Beach or taking her to Napa for the vacation of her dreams, call John, give him some parameters and a budget, and let him know some, and he'll give you some options. Know this, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. You just need an internet connection. Call John, 901-494-3387, or send him an email at jedwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients can save $50 off their first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. Now back to Jeffrey Wright on the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Well, let's just say hypothetically there's a quarterback, and I don't know – Honolulu? Honolulu. That's a good example. Okay. All right. And way away. the family decides to move with the quarterback who happens, uh-huh. in this case, hypothetically, has a little brother who's also a really good quarterback. Okay. Hypothetically decides to move to, I don't know, the southeastern part of the United States. Okay. What's How that, about what's that move cost party. to pack up? Let's, let's say they had a 2,500 square foot home. What's it cost to pack that up, cars and all, and move it to... I don't know, Savannah. What's that cost? What are we talking? I'm guessing hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't think that's the moving cost, but yeah. What do you think the moving cost is? 50? 75? I think it's that much? It's well, probably pretty I'm, high. I'm, you've got to buy the house. You've got to find Oh, you mean like jobs. buying the Oh, house. yeah. I, no, I, Neil simply mean just getting the property across the I meant the literally ocean. just moving everything. Oh, Ten Hell, grand? Heck, if I know. I oh, it's mean, more I don't than that. Know. It cost so us ten grand to move our grand, stuff from right? Mobile to here. You got ripped off, but okay. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Twenty-five tops. I mean, well, it's you got to ship your cars. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not counting that. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You gotta, you're putting, you're putting everything you're on, a cars on a plane. Cars on a plane. Cars included. Cars on a plane. What yeah, because Jeffrey, thing? you've done this, right? Well, yeah, but I got to put it on a truck because I moved from one state to another right. inside the Continental <laughs> yeah. 48. I mean, yeah. I guess it's conceivable they put them on a boat. Yeah, yeah, I mean, whatever. Hey, I don't know how that works. My point is it's expensive. Yeah. This hypothetical family, of course. Yeah. Yes. To sh- in in 2011, to ship a GMC Yukon from L.A. to Memphis or vice versa, it was about $1,200. Okay. Fair enough. My point is, is it's an there expensive no proposition for a family to make that move. Yes. It all comes down to the same, like, and, like, that's my whole deal. Where are the Pattersons like, living these days? They moved I a couple of times. Mark, very close to Ann Arbor. Do you know, Chase? No, I have no idea. None. I mean, because they made the move from Shreveport to down to the coast. They moved around. Five stars get paid. They all get paid. I don't have a problem with it. They get paid. Four stars get paid. Yeah, of course. Neil Lewis got paid like six times. <laughs> Kids, yeah, I mean, 
but there are, there is a naivete that's out there that so it's it does not when people say can you believe a jury I'm like yeah I absolutely can believe it there's a service that will get your car from Honolulu to L A for eight hundred and seventy dollars okay. okay well then it's another twelve hundred so two three grand two grand a car yeah probably had two or three cars yeah ten grand yeah, your whole well, moves well, <laughs> well in fairness they might have cars waiting on them see that's the thing. I, I, I doubt they actually ship cars over here if you want to be hypothetically of course yeah whoever they is that we were referencing still buying a car has got to be more expensive but i'll say this yeah. if hypothetically that kid leads you to a national title and hypothetically that kid wins a heisman trophy hypothetically it was worth it all right so closing this is this going to actually scare anyone Do there be less cheating in in in, in, in sports no it it initially, I think when people initially were yes, arrested, long term no. Initially, yeah, people were scared, but now I haven't seen any difference recently. I mean, you don't know. What are you speaking of, Jeffrey? I'm just saying. I, I again, I'm brainwashed here in Memphis, but uh, everyone wants to go to Memphis. Everyone loves Memphis, but four and five star no, basketball players are, are going to continue to get paid. Now, what it might do is, is it changing the dynamics, though, because you don't ever know where a wiretap is all of a sudden. Well, I mean, look, if you're now here, here's the serious thing. If you're yeah. if you're at Adidas today and you're the I guy think it's that become more direct, I'll say that. I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, see, that's the funny thing. You almost have to kill some layers here. Yes, I do think that is going to be part of it. What do you think is the reaction inside Adidas headquarters today? I mean, you have guys that were doing. Frankly, we're doing their jobs. We're doing exactly what they were told to do by higher ups at Adidas, and they're going to prison. Which means that when you try to replace those guys, hey, this job's got a lot of great perks. It's got travel. It's got an expense report, expense account. Um, now, you run the risk of federal That's prison. The threat of president, federal imprisonment. So I, I, I mean, I do question, like, if you're Adidas and Nike and Under Armour and these people who are all in this rat race, what do you do differently? You got to start paying more for that gig. I, mean, I think you're probably right. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think the gig changes. I think you, you hire smarter job, people. Job stays, I think job stays the same, but I think, I think whatever that actual on-the-book salary was, I bet that thing just tripled. If those guys are making 150, I bet that job's going to pay close to 500 now. I'm just glad that Bill Self was exonerated. I'm glad that we were able to clear the well, air. No, can we talk about Coach USA's comment? The blip. Well, did you? But did you read the whole comment where Coach USA said, "Now I don't know if you know this, but I'm military." Oh God. Coach USA dropped the "I'm military" yesterday. <laughs> The most frustrating part of all this is that Mark Emmert actually gets to take a victory lap. They oh, get more power now. No question. They Amateur never lose in court, ever. Amateurism won. Yeah. A, a, an archaic system won. Keeps winning in court over and over, over and, and over, over and over, and over again. Because of the money. It's worth so much money. A couple minutes left with you, Jeffrey. How should I be feeling about my new cornerback in New Orleans? Enjoy. Enjoy. Okay, how bad is he going to be, though, seriously? He's not good, dude. Like, is there a worse Christmas Eve to morning opening cold than going to bed thinking you're going to sign Patrick Peterson and you get Eli Apple? I mean, Ooh, I don't know how. Is, I don't even know how, what, what what metaphor to use for this. It's, that's the little it's kid. It's like you're getting a car for your graduation. You're thinking some decked out thing, and you get a Yugo. It's a little kid who's got his eye on a bicycle all year long, and he wakes up on Christmas, and he's just got like a Nerf football. Yeah, that is, that is, that's not Bledsoe, or that's not, you know, that's not Bledsoe for Brady. That's like Nathan Peterman for Brady. <laughs> okay, now, you know, given that your your franchise is sort of cursed, other than the two Super Bowls in the last 12 years or whatever it is, is there a chance he becomes an all-pro now that he's not with New York? No. I've watched this no, guy. No, no. It doesn't work like that in the NFL. It's not like, like the Cardinals when he puts the the, the, no. the, the the birds on the bat on his on his chest. No, it's Jason it, it Marquis doesn't... becoming an all star. Well, no, David Freeze. Sorry, yeah. Kyle Loesch, big, big <laughs> World Series MVP. Someone Kyle Loesch was the one that I went on. Oh, it. Someone asked me the other day, "Do I still root for David Freeze?" I was like, "Are you kidding me? I anything short of violent crime." 
and even that could be negotiable, I at least need to look into it. If you help win me a championship, I don't care what you do after it. Like, oh, for sure. Like, yeah, and I, I will root for you along the way. You can leave in the most brutal fashion ever. I don't care. If you if you were involved in a title, I'm all in. Dexter so, Fowler hit a walk off home run to beat the Cubs this past season, and I watched it. And normally okay. that would have caused that would have ruined the a night's sleep. And I went, "Good for you, Dex," and went to bed. I mean, I, hey, you helped me win a title. I'm good with you forever. Yeah, moving on, like that. Yes, but uh, you know, in terms of Eli Apple, I mean, a first rounder just got a fourth round in return. So what does that tell you? Yeah, look, the, the the GM is is terrible. It's pathetic. I do agree, though, because you have Breeze, and it's so hard to get championship winning quarterbacks. I worry about the rest later. And if we suck later, great. Try to win another title in the next two oh, to three years. Oh, if I'm Fine. the Saints, I'm selling out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Try to win right now. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't care if we don't have draft picks next year. It'll be all right. Yeah, who cares? You got to rebuild anyway. Yeah, whatever. Rebuild all the way. Yeah, you, well. The odds of you having another Drew Brees equivalent are not good. No. Well, no. Given the odds are you're going to be very mediocre for a decade. I think he's one of the four best of all time. And he's still playing at a high level. Yes. Hasn't fallen off yet. His completion percentage is still as high as it's ever been. And he's the most accurate quarterback in NFL history. So. Yes. Yeah. Turns out that's the whole that's that's the point of the position. Who's the next Giants quarterback? Do you know yet? I I have no idea. That's the other problem that I have with tanking now. Like, there's no hope because you don't have the quarterback. Different to waste a couple years early on if you already got the quarterback. Well, the two quarterbacks at the top of the draft right now are Justin Herbert and Drew Locke. I mean, neither one of those guys, you don't watch either one of them and go, that's sure thing. Yes, I don't. And I do not love either one of them. And the best young quarterback in the league right now is, is Mahomes. Yes. Quarterback thing is hard, man. It's, I mean, breaking news as we as we end this segment, it's hard to find a quarterback. Well, no, it's like someone was watching. Uh, so Fun Belt was on on Tuesday night, and South Alabama was playing Troy, and South Alabama was driving to get inside the number, and the quarterback tried to throw three interceptions on three passes, and the third time was the charm. And he finally threw it, and it ended up being a pick six. But that was like a nice reminder. It's like, oh, my God, there are 130 kids each and every single year that are FBS starting quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Mitch Trubisky was the first pick in the draft and has all sorts of ability. Second pick, whatever. Has all sorts of athletic ability, and he still makes throws like against New England the other day where it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, no, he stinks. What are you doing? Oh, you think he stinks? yeah, yeah, no. When everyone talks about how great he is as a runner, when when you're a quarterback and everyone talks about your ability to run, unless you're Michael Vick, you stink. Yeah, I, I can't disagree. If, if the Bears, if the Bears saying, had a like, good quarterback, quarterback they're four, five and one right now. Yeah, um, I mean, like at the end of the day, this position is about instincts, reaction, and throwing the ball accurately. And anticipating. Last, uh, Mitch Trubisky cannot do any of those. Last thing, World Series over, or does it at least get to a game six? I want a retroactive. I want uh, somebody get me uh, an SID from the University of Alabama on this. I want a retroactive World Series championship for 2013. Because we have now seen, since 2004, the Red Sox are 14-2. and two. In World Series wow. games, and those two were against my beloved 2013 Cardinals. <laughs> so you should and get a I, title I, for that. <laughs> well, no one else can beat them. So you want a first flight championship? Even, is what you want? No, I want a you, retroactive. You want some pro shop credit for, relative, for winning a couple games? I, I want a relative to par. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not first flight. I just want strokes. <laughs> it's a handicap title. Yes. We deserve it, damn it. I hear you. Who's on the show? I'm sure it's basketball related, the whole thing. Yeah, well, because Mark got hurt last night, too. So we're. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ooh. So we got to deal with that. You need Corey Jeffries on just to perk up spirits then this morning, don't you? Uh, Jason and John, I'm sure, will have him sometime from 11 to 2. All right. We'll talk soon. <laughs> Thanks, to Jeffrey, for joining us. All As always, if you haven't done so, go get that flu shot. Temperatures dropping, rain outside today. Gin and Pharmacy on South Lamar in Oxford offers walk in services for flu shots. They accept most. Major insurance providers free if you have one of those. If not, $25 still to take care of yourself with a flu shot there at GNN Pharmacy. They deliver the prescriptions local in the Oxford area and are located on South Lamar. Join the Weston Jackson for their inaugural event. It's called the Festival of Trees. It's a community wide event. The Weston Jackson has partnered with Eventful, Visit Jackson, Friends of Children's Hospital, and many others to create a one of a kind all month long holiday event comprised of elaborately decorated Christmas trees lining the Weston Jackson Halls, a holiday charity gala, sugar plum fairy teas, and brunch with Santa. This annual event is sure to delight kids of all ages and warm the Christmas spirit in all who attend. Purchase your tickets today at jacksonfestivaloftrees.com. Podcast also brought to you by Pinnacle Trust. Pinnacle Trust is based in Madison, Mississippi, but it represents clients in 24 states, has advisors in three states. Founded in 1997, Pinnacle Trust provides detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much more. At Pinnacle Trust, investing is treated like a commodity and decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. Regardless of your level of wealth, Pinnacle Trust will sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan. Cookie cutter financial planners put you in a box at Pinnacle Trust. A box is built just for you. To learn more about Pinnacle Trust, go to Pintrust.com. That's P-I-N-N Trust.com. Mention you heard about Pinnacle Trust on the podcast and you'll get 10% off your first year's fee. Okay, let's see. Um, are you reading from the message board or are you reading from Twitter? Where are you? I was on Twitter. I was letting you do the message board. Oh, I see. I haven't even been to the message board yet. Oh, well, then I'll go to the message board. Hold on. We'll just start from the bottom. Let's see. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. That's what I hear. Um, Started from the bottom. Now the whole team's here. Is that a thing? I don't know, man. That would make a good song. Ole Miss opens their 2021 basketball campaign in the pavilion. Okay, so 2021. That's a couple years away. How many four and five stars are in the starting lineup, Mr. McCurdy? What year? Uh, twenty twenty one. Um, was Henson a four star? Dude. Okay. Um, I'll say no five. Well, twenty twenty one. One five star. What's the cutoff for a five star in basketball? I'm not I'm sure. Other. I'll say there's one five star and two or three four stars. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think Sean Robinson's a gonna play at Ole Miss. Blake Henson is a four star. Okay. Henson's a four star. Uh, what did the junior Henson was one oh five, uh what the junior college guard did they sign? Did he get a fourth star? What's his name? Um, um, uh, Williams. I can't remember, man. I'm sorry. My brain's fried today. Yeah, not my area. Either way, we got your answer, so that's fine. Ooh, you've covered a lot of college football here. We'll make this not Ole Miss or anything. This is the worst college football coach you've ever seen coach. The worst college football coach I ever saw coach? Yeah. Ooh. I mean, I get there's like an OL 2006 at Orgeron joke in here, but I mean. I'm not making fun of Orgeron anymore. Yeah. Well, um, the joke's different from 18 to 7. Yeah. Who? Uh, we got. I mean, I'm sure the answer is some obscure team that came into Auburn or Ole Miss or something. And, and just, just got, looked like crap. And, and just terrible. got absolutely handed. Uh there were a couple of Jerry Donardo teams at the end that were pretty poorly coached. Oh, yeah. Um, I was never impressed with Carly Hallman at LSU at all from a coaching standpoint. Um, I 
I'm trying to think. I mean, God, man, I don't know. Um, that's what comes to mind. I, I saw a team when I was a kid. Louisiana Tech had a coach. I can't remember his name. Maybe like Larry Bechtel. And they were really bad. Like they lost all their – they were 0-10. They were awful. And they fired him before the NLU game, what is now Louisiana Monroe. And they promoted – I've told you about this before. They got the baseball coach to come over and coach the football team. What year was this? Oh, I was a kid. I was like 80 okay. maybe. His name was Pat Patterson. He's the one that – Oh, yeah. We, we looked that up with Kellum that day. Yeah. Ugh. Um, Turned into a tragic story we yeah, were not aware of. Had a tragic ending that I was not aware of. Yeah. Um, his nickname was Gravy. Really? Yeah. And I went to go. Always go to his baseball camps when I was a kid because Louisiana Tech baseball camp. Please tell me Gravy was on the shirts. No. Nope. Really? No. Nope. Oh, that would have been good. Gravy's a good nickname. It's a good nickname. That's a good small school Southern yeah. baseball coach nickname. Yeah. So I would always go to that baseball camp. So I. To me, Pat Patterson was a big deal, and uh, he coached that football game against NLU and Tech won. And so, I don't know, for whatever reason, that made me think of that team. That team was really bad all year, and then they hired him for one game. Get to these from time to time. Uh, we haven't done a Fireway Friday very much, so we'll go into it a little bit. Uh, a lot of questions in this, more of a personal job standpoint. Uh, favorite part of your job? Um, oh, seeing your pretty face yeah, every morning. I got two. Um, unlike Neil, I, I, I like a lot of interaction with subscribers and stuff. I like meeting people. Um, <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I really, really enjoy it. I, I try to, on trips and things, run into subscribers when I can. Um Already been kind of trying to set up some stuff in Nashville this week for uh, the Vandy game in a couple of weeks, and then from a, from an actual work standpoint, I, I, I'll give credit here. This goes to Mike, some other people too. The access I get at baseball to basically write whatever I want, I, I get told no very uh, very rarely, and in college sports today. Now baseball is a different animal, obviously, than football, basketball, but that is a uh, that is nice that I can dream something up, and most of the time they'll find a way to work with it. I've been told no some, but not very often, so I do appreciate that, I guess. Um, do you think you could easily go back to a normal nine to five work schedule if something happened? Well, I mean, yeah, you'd do it if you could, but I would hate it. It would drive me insane. Like I, I couldn't imagine going back to class and sitting in a classroom eight to three, just nonstop now. No, I mean the whole work eight to five thing after doing what we've done for as long as we've done it. And I, I mean, I, I wasn't on a traditional eight to five yeah. in Mobile. I haven't been on a traditional eight to five maybe ever. So I don't, it would be culture shock. Now, I mean, there would be positives, too. That time clock goes in, and it's over. Yeah, sure. I mean, to some level, we're kind of like doctors. You're always on call to some extent. I mean, you never know what could happen at any moment. I mean, you always like kind of need your this, phone on. I posted this on the message board. I had to yell at Russell Saturday, get off your phone. To quit, yeah. Get off your phone. Stop working. Yeah. Because you just get into that work, work, and Social work. media has made it so much worse. Oh, yeah. It's just not. It just you can't, you can't put it down. I mean, you probably in some ways dream for the newspaper days of when the deadline hit. It's done. There's nothing you can do to change the paper the next day. There was a certain high to that. Yeah. You hit publish, and that's it. Well, I mean, I went home from football. Like, now, guys on our job go home from a football game or back to their hotel or whatever, and they work all night. Mm -hmm. I never did that. It's over. When I left Jordan Harris, eleven fifteen is eleven fifteen. When I left Jordan Hare as the Auburn beat writer or wherever I was, you're well, done till the next night. I whatever. was done till the next day. There was nothing I could. I mean, you could tell me a story at two in the morning. Hey Neil, guess what? Nothing you can do. Right, nothing much I can do about it. I'm not getting it in the paper. For twelve hours, you're kind of just chilling. Yeah. I don't have a website. Uh, all right. Continuing here, I'll read the question. I don't know what I'll how I'm gonna exactly say here. How successful have you guys really been? That probably based off your perspective as much as anything. Um, what fueled that? What made you guys confident enough to branch into podcasts and other stuff that pushed uh pushed that? 
don't mind failing. Uh, I think it's a lot of it. I mean, we try a lot of stuff. Some stuff works. Some stuff don't. You throw some stuff to the to the cutting room floor. I mean, we've told the story a thousand times. I mean, the podcast started as just a, hey, what if? I mean, Neil had an extensive radio background. And we said once a week, let's just talk and see where it goes based off our morning conversations that we had every morning. And suddenly people get interested. Credit got involved. It becomes daily. And it just just kind of grows, and it, it it stayed consistent enough to where, I mean, I, I get kind of sentimental and sappy at times with you guys, but in all honesty, it's the numbers stay so consistent that they baffle me a lot of times. I mean, the numbers stay within just a thousand one way or the other, which is which is incredible because we have a lot of thousands um, every single day. So it's a uh, good humble brag. I mean, it's true, though. I mean, there's a, <laughs> there's a difference. You go, well, we have 2,200 listeners. It stays within a thousand both ways, but I mean, you know, it, it's... <laughs> on up there pretty considerable and when so it's it, it's it's kind of impressive yeah, we're, we're over 2200 we're over 2200 we we started i, I went back and looked because i i tried to play our first podcast we ever did oh on god one day and the 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 host site they still list them but i couldn't play it it wouldn't work yeah. it wouldn't let me do uh, it because probably a blessing it was when it would give you the little music and we go talk shoe recorded live ding, and then yeah. after ding you could go in and start talking and uh, I think the first week it was like thirteen hundred and forty listens or something for the weekly one on the on the very first yeah, one. Yeah, that's probably about right. And then it just kind of went up and went up, and you went, well, maybe okay. Let's yeah. see where this thing, uh, see when this thing is. Um, to answer the question of how successful has it been, I'll answer this honestly. It's changed our lives. Uh, it's changed our lives. I wouldn't be here without it. I would have yeah. moved on to something else. I Chase probably would have too. Yeah, it's it's. I know I would have. I, 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 I'm not going to get specific. Yeah, yeah. But I absolutely know that I would have moved on. Yeah, and I, I I was struggling with whether to take a job right before Dave left the site, 2010, 9, whatever that was. Um, Fun times. Yeah. And then since then, I've applied for one job, and in hindsight, I'm very, very thankful I didn't get it. I, I didn't get – I got sort of close. Not I wasn't a finalist, but I was. they were interested to some degree. Um and that would have been a culture shock and a mistake looking back. So uh, glad that did not go as it did. But um, what's a job search in this field like? Nothing like a job search in a lot of other fields whatsoever. Um, it's networking and who you know to an extent that is hard to fathom most of the time. Well, I mean, I, 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 this is going to sound like a humble brag. I don't mean for it to. It's along the two lines. People ask me a lot, are you going to leave? Well, number one, I don't know. And number two, the jobs that people have approached me about, like someone that I really respect in our field, and I don't want to get specific at all because I don't. It's not fair to the people. Mm -hmm. Someone who I really respect in the field approached me about a job that 15 years ago I would have been really interested in. Hell, might have taken it on the phone. They couldn't pay enough. Because of what we've been able to do. We get this a lot. I'm going to say this real quick. Because if you're listening to the podcast at this point, what are we, an hour in? Yeah. If you're listening right now, you're one of our loyal listeners. I get, and I know Chase gets this, because if I get it once, he gets it 20 times because of my really weird social stuff that I've got to work on. It's my New Year's resolution. But I have two more months to be psychotic before I try to fix it. Um, people come up to us all the time and say, hey, man, I really love the podcast. And I love that. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy hearing it. Um, you guys are funny. You guys are whatever. You guys are a big part of what we do. Had a, a woman stop me the other day and, 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 and scolded me about the way that I look at myself and stuff. And, and so I, I appreciate all that. She did it nicely. She, would, she was very, very, very nice to me. But if you really want to thank us for the podcast, I mean, still say thanks because I like hearing it. And I know Chase does too. But if you really want to thank us, support our advertisers. And when you support our advertisers, tell them. tell them that the reason you're supporting them is because of us. If you really want to help us, that's how you do it. And that's I'm not if that's coming across in the wrong way, it's just because I I'm 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 weird. Well, I'm, like, I, I hope I'm communicating that in a way yeah. that makes it understandable. Well, I, mean, I had a conversation with uh, the the Blue Delta guys are in Jackson this week at the Sanderson Farms Championship, the PGA event down yeah. in Jackson, and they were one of the pro am gifts for the for the tournament and things. And a lot of people picked Blue Delta and told them, "Hey, I listen to the podcast. I'm getting these jeans because of this. Do that. That is fantastic. That is absolutely what yes. I mean, above all else is. Yes, you know, just tell them, hey, 
like what you guys are associated with and, and everything from that standpoint. But no, the job search, I mean, I, I've had, I don't know that I've ever actually had an inter, like a, a sit down interview. I don't know that I've actually ever had one in my life. Like my last sit down interview may have been to be the sports editor of the Daily Mississippian in 2005. Seriously, I, I don't know. I mean, I got hired out of college by the Spirit. Conservative for that job now, you wouldn't get it. Oh, I know. I don't not anywhere. I'd have to go in with like <laughs> campaign stickers or something. Um, and I was, I was Pelosi twenty twenty. I was incredibly qualified for that job at the time, where it was almost <laughs> even whatever. Um, I mean, I got hired by the Spirit out of college. Jeff Robertson was basically the reason I got that job. I think I had to go in and talk to Chuck for a minute, but it wasn't much to that. Um, not I mean the rudely, it just was what it was. Um. You know, I mean, I lost a lot of money and made a career failure out of ESP, the ESPN thing, and that was not really even an interview. And then, I, I, I mean, I was living a basketball game. I text Neil and basically ask for pennies to work for them is what I did. Um, and it was pennies. Um, well, it's what I t- I, it was exactly it was, what it was I t- a very honest conversation in all directions. Which was shocking, right? Point. Yeah, no, I told was, you the yeah. deal. <laughs> And uh, I said, if you can have some patience, this it has a chance. Yeah, but if you have no patience, it's not going to work. Yeah, kind of took a flyer a little bit, and then it just every year was seemingly a little better than the year previous. Is kind of how it worked there for for a little while with a couple big uh, big jumps. And you can't say I wasn't honest with you. No, no, it was just. Uh, I mean, because I mean, I was contemplating to some degree, even kind of getting out of the business, maybe to some extent at that time. Because there was and, a junior uh, college that was talking to you about like doing. Yeah, stuff. and that had been a disaster um, at the time. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've so it just it just kind of happened, and it worked, and we've been able to to build. Like I said, I've applied for one job, I've had one job sort of offered, and neither one just couldn't couldn't do what this all the way around has been able to do right now between site and. Uh, and podcast. The, so. the thing I tell young journalists all the time that always ask, how do you, what, what advice do you have? It's when you're young, be willing to work for next to nothing and do anything. Do anything. We get, you can't, we, and we can't tell you how many people approach us annually and say, hey, can I cover football? Well, no. But if somebody would come to us and go, hey, can I be your volleyball beat writer? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Am I going to pay you? No, I'm not going to pay you. You're going to get clips. You're going to get links or whatever it is now. And my old school vernacular that would be clips because you'd literally clip out the story. Well, I mean, you know, look at our look, look look at our intern pass. I mean, Brett's doing a good job of football for us one day a week right now, and that's going to be a clip from Yahoo or Rivals or Verizon or however you want to put that. That's on a oath, it's, Jace. It's, the what? Oath. Oath. Sorry, that's right. That's on a uh, that's on a resume. I mean, we've had several turn it into things. I mean. We were simply a pit stop for Chandler because she was well That's above our. That's not true. She, if it weren't for us, she's working at Kmart right now. She basically called. Like it was funny. I, I sat down with her the first time, and she was like, "I'm going into news. I'm doing news. I've already got these 25 job offers. I just want to get a little bit of sports to say I did it." And I'm like, "Okay, good yeah. enough." Because like you looked at her resume and went, no, "I don't get this one very often. <laughs> this is not one that I'm that I'm real accustomed to here." So. Yeah, yeah. Like he's just like messing with her. I'd be like, "Yeah, you're so lucky. You spent some time with us." Well, I, got, I think I told one of our ones right after. It was like, "You're following Bear Bryant right now." So this is this. Uh, you know, sorry. She was exceptional. Yeah, uh, I like this question actually because I have an interesting answer to it. How differently is trajectory of women's football if Hugh Freeze had decided Chad Kelly wasn't the right type of kid for his program, and not sign him to be the starting quarterback in 2015? I know it's been said in the past that Chad being the quarterback masked a lot of warts that Freeze in the football program had. It's probably obvious to say winning the Sugar Bowl doesn't happen, which may have then allowed Ross Stewart to fire Freeze after the 16 draft night, which then may have ended the NCAA fiasco altogether. Did Freeze have a plan B in case he didn't land Chad, or would there have been just road with Devontae Kincaid and Robbie Cannon? Okay, a couple parts here. First one, yeah, they wouldn't have won in 15. The 15 class, in some ways, then is considered, or sorry, the 13 class finishing in 15 is in somewhat considered a failure at that point without the Sugar Bowl. They have the one access bowl. They lose to TCU, but you don't have the second win over Alabama. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot there where I think that changes the entire legacy of that class that right now has a fairly pristine legacy if you take out just some some, some minutia. Um, Otherwise, Neil may disagree because of the freeze draft night thing, but I'm going to say nothing because – 
Oh, yeah, I disagree. Freeze is still going to get fired probably after 16, if he doesn't get fired for NCAA reasons before that. But otherwise, from an on-field standpoint, he's getting he's, either the stuff's coming out or he's getting fired after 16. Okay, but back up one second. Okay. Back up a second, because I'm, I'm not sure that I'm following your train of thought, which okay. might be because I'm slow no, and old. So what you're saying, Chase, is that if Chad Kelly had gone to Indiana and – Ryan Buchanan and Devontae Kincaid in some combination so or whatever. Where, where, where's the quarterback in 15? That team went 10-3? and three. It did, yeah. Instead of 10-3, and three, that team goes – see, I think that team goes like 6-6. Six and six. Yeah, I'd go there. Probably. And so when draft night happens, I think Hugh Freeze gets fired. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that's the one thing. If, if, yeah. And that's possible. And if I so, think he, then okay. I, that, that draft night happened on a Thursday night. Does that change the NCAA situation? Uh, yeah, I think so, to a degree. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Who's the coach? If he gets fired on draft night. Because <laughs> the coach, if he fired the fall before that, we both believe it would have been Joe McElwain. Um, I would say the coach is either uh, Taggart or Doran. At that point. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. Willie Taggart, maybe? That would have been an April deal, so you may have had to do an interim kind of a deal for a year, but that interim probably would have been something like Dave Womacky. Yeah, it probably would have been actually. And then I think you're doing a coaching search, and so you, you're not doing the promote off the staff thing. Might have even been Dan Warner. Interim. May have been Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Something from that mold's our point. Yeah. If it doesn't change the NCAA thing, the only thing that I think it changes from a program standpoint at this day, today. Okay. Frankly, I think you always talk about the curve that's kind of changed. And I don't know if this is good or bad. Oh, kinda, I know where you're going. It's kind of sad. I think Ole Miss is happier with five and three right now. Yeah, I Generally agree with that. You can't get success to that level and beat Alabama and look like that and have all these first round picks and then all of a sudden, you know what I mean? It's just it's changed your entire mentality as a fan base. Well, had the Cubs not won the World Series, there's an acceptance that's easier when you've never been to that next step. Had the Cubs not won the World Series in '16, I would be sitting here today going, "Yeah, you know what? They won 95 games. They went to the playoffs." It's just it's it's right. It's, it's what I would have said. I said yeah. they won 95 games. They went to the playoffs. Had a bad finish, but they went to the playoffs. It's a good season. Don't don't make wholesale changes. I wouldn't be sitting here going, "All right, yep, you want to you want to trade Schwarber? Trade him. You want to trade uh, uh, Ian Happ? Trade him. Get rid of Addison Russell. Let's spend a gazillion dollars on Bryce Harper. I know it doesn't make any sense, but let's do it anyway." I'm having that emotional response to all of it, which is what fans are doing right now. Yeah. Take a break tell you that you can find the full calendar events for Oxford at visit OxfordMS.com slash events. The Great 38 starts this weekend. I've been telling you about that. The three mile, the eight mile, the 13.1 half marathon. Races benefiting the Chucky Mullins Foundation. <laughs> Neil and his computer cracked me up. Um, visit Oxford is uh, helping host the uh, Health and Race Expo featuring the YMCA Kids Zone. So on Friday, it's around the Manning Center. And once again, have lots of fun activities for young kids to keep them busy and active. Picking up race packets, you can pick those up at the Manning Center as well on Friday from 3 to 7. Free parking at the Manning Center and at the tennis facility because anywhere else you need permits. We're well, well aware of that. You can't just park anywhere on campus without having a, uh, a visitor's pass or anything. So, again, calendar events, a lot of stuff going on here with Visit Oxford, and that's visitoxfordms.com. After a thrilling victory over the Mississippi State Bulldogs, the Ole Miss soccer team is back at home tonight for senior night at the Ole Miss Soccer Complex. They take on Evil Vanderbilt, 6 p.m. Admission is free, so bring the family out and enjoy Ole Miss soccer on Thursday night at 6 p.m. See Coach Kermit Davis and the Rebels this season for just $199 with the new Ole Miss Hoops Rebel Flex Pass. For just $199, you will receive a ticket to all 16 home games. So visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com to purchase. Don't miss a minute of the action this season at the Pavilion with Coach Yo and the Women's Hoops team. Get your tickets today for just $50. Tickets can be purchased by visiting OleMissTix.com. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's try to trigger Neil with one here. Um, and mostly just to annoy the people that hate it when we do this. How can you assume Apollo beat Rocky in the rematch fight when the only fighter they both fought 
uh, killed Apollo, and Rocky went toe to toe with the Russian and won. Doing that head-to-head thing, the whole... I mean, you're doing the transitive property You hate the transitive property. Well, I mean, if you do the transitive property, then you believe that Eastern Michigan would beat Ohio State. That's true. Look, Apollo, by the end, had aged. Okay? Maybe some CTE had kicked in. He was in the middle of an affair. He had... he, he, He was. He had an illegitimate child on the way. There was a lot going on when he got knocked out by Drago and killed in Vegas that day, okay? You've got to be able to put that beside you, behind you, and look at Apollo Creed shortly after he had been dancing on the beach with Rocky Balboa in Santa Monica, I believe, and then helped Balboa knock out Clang, uh, Lang in the third round. When they went and had that fight, Rocky had just had a fight. He probably was coming down from the post-fight high. And Creed, very privately, had been doing all of the training with Balboa. Rocky had no idea that while Creed was training, he had an ulterior motive. And that was to get him back in the ring shortly thereafter for the rematch that no one saw. That's why this all went down the way that it did. Everybody wants to make this something that it wasn't. Creed, being the genius that he was, Creed knew if he trained with Balboa the whole time, he would know what the weaknesses were. He would get him to a certain place. He would teach him most everything, but not everything. He would know exactly how to take Balboa down and be in the best shape of his life for it. Yeah. Um, sorry, I got really so, distracted. Something happened. Something. I'll take it later. Okay. Um, holy crap. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, people. I've got to shut up. Um, yeah, that won't stir anything. I'll take a minute. Um, if people can lose their mind. Yeah, I know. Cause I, like it, I've stared at my screen for a second there. Uh, I saw you. you. Your eyes got big. It did. <sighs> Sure. I mean, look, whatever. Um, Apollo in his prime was better than Rocky in his prime. It's, it's not close. It's not it's close. Not even... Balboa was all grit. He had a great chin. Great chin, and he had a great heart. I mean, took shots. And he was a diplomat. A but diplomat. he was not Creed in his prime. You could have easily done, like, the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing here where, like, Rocky and one of, the, like, the Creeds was, like, the mayor of Philadelphia, couldn't you? Yeah. Like at some point. Yeah. Like Rocky Five, instead of him going broke, could have just been the mayor of Philadelphia. <laughs> could have been the president of the United States. Yeah. Crazier things. Like Rocky Five is actually a campaign race. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Street fight still at the end. That's <laughs> fine. Creed giving that. speeches for him. Gosh. <laughs> Apollo's the best fighter in the Rocky series. Apollo's one of the best fighters in the history of the world. Yeah, Apollo is absolutely the most talented fighter in that series. When you think about the great fighters, you think of Ali, Leonard, Creed. Get your thought here. We'll close here. <laughs> that good? Yeah, sure. DM, we've it's been a bit of our punching bag over the last month or so. Oh, the Daily Mississippian, not yeah. direct message. No, gotcha. Daily Mississippian, gotcha. sorry. Vernacular there that you're <laughs> Because you still call it just the Mississippian. I do. Yeah, so you wouldn't even pick up on my on well, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Okay. Um, they have a story on student section attendance today in okay. the Mississippian. It's coming from a student here. A couple paragraphs I'll read to you. Get okay. your take on it. Sure. To start with the obvious, when closing in the stadium two years ago, the administration decided it was wise to move the students from the south end zone to the north, the absolute last spot in Bon Hemingway that the grueling Mississippi sun decides to hide its face. Second, students are struggling to find an incentive to come and actually stay at the football game. Free refills and donuts, fourth quarter dollar hot dogs, and singing with the alma mater with the team after the game just aren't enough for a lot of students. As much fun as it is telling opposing fans we're going to beat the hell out of you, being pretty sure that we aren't, and locking the vault and all the other times we actually do something uniformly, arguably one of the best student sections in the country, LSU, has a uniform and hands-on action, often in coordination with the band for, very, for every halfway big play. It seems that LSU understands that college kids have short attention spans. It's more complex than that, obviously, but yeah. just your general thought on that as we generally agree. It comes down to winning. 
It does. It it's comes all. down to winning. Stud- n- not the whole stadium. Students, it comes down to winning. Yeah. It's the primary thing everywhere, but with students, it's the overwhelming thing. Look, if you're not winning, you start finding excuses not to be there. Every little thing is bigger when you're not winning. So Every sort of big thing is smaller when you are winning. And I say this as the as a dad who's got a 17-year-old who's about to go off to college. And so what I'm about to, the, the scenario I'm about to describe does not make me comfortable. You're a college boy. And you're out. You have a date. And she looks really good. And she's really pretty. And she's at the game with you. And it's 100 degrees at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And she says to you, can we go get something to drink? Can we go? If your team's losing 27 to 3, yeah, yeah, let's go. Not winning here. Might as well go make a day better somewhere else, right? Yeah, of course. If if your team's winning and it's exciting, she probably doesn't really want to leave either. And so when you're not winning, you just find excuses to leave. And the truth about the Grove is you can't, on one hand, brag about the Grove the way that Ole Miss brags about the Grove. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't brag about the Grove. But you can't brag about the Grove and market the Grove and put the Grove in Southern Living and all of that stuff and talk about how we have the greatest tailgating and all that stuff. And when ESPN game day comes, they open up with, here's a look at the Grove. You can't say all that and then be upset at people for wanting to go hang out in the Grove instead of fry in the student section when it's 100 degrees. You, 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 it's not, you, and maybe the not students fair. get sent somewhere on the sides. They're never getting sent back to the south end zone because it's premium seating now. Right. So, And so I don't know what the answer to that is. But – I'm never going to be the person that faults the kids when it's if, – if, if Campbell's at an Arkansas game next year and it's 105 degrees and she tells me I left in the second quarter, it was just too hot, plus Alabama was ahead 31 to nothing. What am I going to say? Well, you're not a very good fan. I'm going to say, I get it. I'm surprised you stayed that long. Or if she says, you know what, we decided to go to this place and watch the game. Yeah. Because yeah. it was just so hot, Dad. Or my date's family was there, and they had a tailgate, and they had a TV hooked up, and we just watched the game and ate chicken tenders. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I, look, I, we've talked about this. It applies to 18- to 22-year-old kids, too. They have options. You have to make it an event. You have to find ways to make these games events LSU this was funny about that thread the other day about LSU LSU has lots of corporate parts of their thing I mean it, it more yeah. than they get credit for being tons but they have a great band they it's do. a big stadium that they when they're winning stays pretty full and frankly and this isn't about Ole Miss this is about 99 percent of the fan bases in the country it's cool to participate at LSU yeah they go with the band on every choreographed thing. They're doing the Chinese bandits, and they're doing the whole deal, and it's a thing. I'll go one further with what you just said. You're exactly right. Yeah. At Ole Miss and at a lot of schools like Ole Miss, it's not cool to have fun. It's not cool to dance with the band. At LSU, they've got that huge band. It's really, really good. They have traditions. You talked about this the other day. If you take away from LSU the Tiger and call in Baton Rouge before the game and you take away the third down thing that they do with the Chinese bandit thing. Yeah, the bowing and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, if you take all that away, well, then a lot of people are going to be at the game and be like, where am I? Uh-huh. But instead you but have – But instead, a- even as a visitor, I know exactly when LSU is going to do everything uh-huh. they do. I can time it myself. I've seen it. Yeah, and it's cool. It's fun. And the band's up there with them, and they all participate. And you're part – like you said, you're part of a group. And so when they come over after the game and they tell you, you guys helped us win this game, it's not empty. Mm-hmm. It's different. I don't know. I They don't get all gussied up down there for a football game either. They just go. They wear a T-shirt. It's hot as hell. They wear a T-shirt and a jersey or whatever, and they go to the games and they have fun, and they've had a few all day long, and they have a good time. I don't know. It's a different deal. 
I don't know the answer to all these questions. I, what I can tell you, you – know, Ole Miss isn't the only one struggling. I mean, hell, Nick Saban's mad about it at Alabama. I mean, he's mad because he goes kid, all the way. Kids are leaving there. Yeah. You know, I mean – They're bored the other way. You know, uh, I know at Arkansas they've had attendance issues Awful. all season. Um, Auburn's been empty. Auburn's been empty. I noticed that the Auburn Tennessee game how empty it looked on television. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's look, it's this is a challenge for everybody, and for Ole Miss there are some unique challenges that, frank, frankly, just a fluffy shark would solve the majority of them. Gosh. All right. On that note, we are done with today's show. Check out RollGrove.com again. Matt Luke video, some other stuff, some baseball stuff. I'll have some stuff later today as well. So Probably no podcast Matt tomorrow. Grove. Yeah, we haven't made a final decision, but that's kind of where we are, especially since we did a whatever we want to call this question. Throw it at us Thursday. Throw it at us Thursday. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. I like alliteration a lot, so I'm good with that. We'll talk to you uh, next time, whenever that time may be. And, again, check rubblegrove.com. Yes, we have a website in the process.